Let's say if you were super rich, let's say if you had $100 million, would the market going down affect you? What's up, YouTube? This is Amin Bunsel. I'm here again with another video. I want to talk about experts. So there's a lot of experts in this world, uh, especially in investing, um, who, or even your friends, who say that, hey, I know for sure this is going to happen in the market, or I know for sure this is going to happen in the future, or this is going to happen with a real estate market. I saw so much of that during the crash um, around 2008 and all that. Um, there's all these gurus that you see on TV, um, you know, they jump on MSNBC or CNN or Fox News and they start talking about things and then boom, you know, they're just like, they've always known this is going to happen. They try to tell people, but nobody listened. Or your friend that tells you, um, you know, hey, the market is gonna go down, it's gonna be the worst crash of ever, and then it's gonna be devastating. Of course the markets cycle. Like, who the hell doesn't know that? Like, mar the markets cycle. Like, they go up and they go down, they go up and they go down, they go up and they go down. That's what markets do. So, if I'm gonna sit here and say, well, the market's gonna crash, well, I'm right. And then if I say, well, the market's gonna go up, oh, well, I'm right, right? And the trick is like, oh, it's when is it gonna crash? When is it gonna go up, right? I don't care who the hell you are or how much money you have or whatever, you have no clue when the actual market is gonna crash. That is just not the case. People say all kinds of stuff about when the markets are gonna crash or when some events are gonna happen, as if they've got a crystal ball. You know, this stuff, you shouldn't run your life with this type of prediction. You should always make your decisions based on just being the right decision for you. For example, let's say if you want to buy a house and you want to rent it out. Okay. Would you, should you buy a house? Let's say if you can only afford up to 300,000, should you buy a house 400,000, 500,000, knowing that you can't really afford that, but you're like, well, I can make do, I can like, it, as long as somebody's there paying me, uh, you know, rental rent every month, I'm good, right? As long as the, as long as we have the same amount of rent we are right now, we're good, right? I mean, should you do that? You know, um, I would say no, okay? Don't over leverage yourself when you buy assets. Just don't or you do anything right like when you do anything don't over leverage or leverage yourself because you're just asking for trouble don't push yourself to the brim so that any movement in the market starts hurting you because that's just that's just foolish so for example if you can if you can afford three hundred thousand maybe buy two hundred thousand so you have a a little bit of cushion a margin of safety if you will you probably have some money that you have left over that you can cover um, in case the market goes crazy and I don't know you have vacancy for like six months or something or um, whatever something happens where you can't you know nobody's renting uh, or you can't find a renter um, and you have a vacancy for like six months and then you have to cover the payment well you can do that if you plan properly if you bought beyond your means, you can't do that. Another thing happens when you think of those terms. It prepares you for the future. Here comes my Nostradamus friend, says, well, I told you that the market was gonna crash, and guess what, it crashed. Or it's crashing, right? And uh, this one time this person was right. But remember, they've been saying it for 10 years, so they're, they're bound to be right. Anyways, their nonsense uh, is now coming true because it has to, the market cycles, and so they feel validated. Um, but is it affecting you is, is the question, right? Um, so if you actually got a house that you could afford, the actual um, gyrations of the market affect you a lot less if your expenses are way lower than what you earn and what you've saved already. Let's say if you were super rich, let's say if you had a hundred million dollars. If you had a hundred million dollars, would the market going down affect you? 
okay, so you make a little bit less, but you're still going to be fine, right? Well, you can mimic that. Okay, I know you don't have $100 million, but you can mimic that effect by having a low liability base. So just don't have so many liabilities and have savings. When you have that, things are great. You know, now, now you can actually size it to your situation. So let's say you don't earn that much, right? Well, I would say don't buy an iPhone don't buy the latest iPad or the latest, you know, MacBook Pros or get a new car. Definitely not. Maybe not even buy a house. Or if you want to buy a house, go to a place which is super cheap. Like go to Vegas or something or go to Midwest. So go somewhere where buying a place is super cheap. Okay. If you don't have money. So what I'm you have to look at situations and say, what do I want and how much do I have? And what can I do to get what I want and not just go broke doing it, right? And so that's that's where I'm coming from um, with this video here, where I'm just sharing this mindset of of always having abundance just by not tapping your resources so much, like always be in a, in a position where you were able to have choices I think that's where people screw up like I think they get a paycheck and they, they spend it right away and they get go they go get a, the latest iPhone and stuff like that I always choose to buy a used iPhone um, I bought this iPhone X uh, for 650 uh, it's a 256 gigabyte from somebody like uh, less than a year ago um, you know, 650, that's, uh, and this thing when it came out was like 1200 bucks, I think. And I'm a techie person. I like, like my tech stuff. Like I've got an iPad Pro right here. Okay, also bought used by the way, this Pro was used. Uh, you know, my MacBook Pro that's sitting on the, on the floor there. Um, that MacBook Pro was maxed out when it came out. This was about, it was bought by somebody at about 2700 bucks something like that 27 28 something something like that and i got it for 1200 bucks because i bought it used it's like one terabyte it's got 16 gigabytes of ram it's awesome i make videos and music on it it's great um so that's what i would do even if you have like in in, in my case even if i have the ability to i just don't i want to let it depreciate um and you just I know it's at first you're like, ah, oh, you're buying used, but believe me, you get used to it and you get used to picking the right used item. When I look at this iPhone, I check it like head to toe and it was like perfect because the guy kept it in a case just like I do. There's a case in the back, there's a thing in the front, you know, the screen protector. I could sell this today and this would, you know, the person, next person getting it would be like, hey, great, you took care of it. You know, you didn't like just throw it around. So that's what I would recommend. You know, I guess basically what I'm saying is you got to live within your means, but I'm going further than that saying not only live within your means, but you have to like try to live below your means, much, much lower than your means allow for. Um, then what you can do is you can really take the rest of the stuff that you aren't using and you actually go invest it and go do stuff. Um, and then you don't have to listen to these um, pundits and your friends who claim to know the future because it doesn't matter because you have lived below your means so much that you've built up savings, that you've built up investment accounts. And even if the investment accounts go down, you know that you're not like your friends or people on the TV. You're not going to just sell and just like panic and just be like, ah, I don't know what to do. You're just going to be and because you listened and you and you went and listened to guys like Warren Buffett and Jack Bogle and you invested in things like index, index funds, which are a collection of stocks and not just a single stock that can go bankrupt. Um, that you're in a way better position that you can actually 
you actually are in a position then when you see the market go down and you get excited because you're like, oh, this is so cool because you can buy more. Like literally right now, it's 2000, you know, it's, what is it? Uh, September 20 something, uh, 21, 2019. And people are saying, well, the market's gonna crash, the real estate market's gonna crash, everything. Great. Okay, whenever it does, I'll be ready. All I'm doing right now is living below my means, hoarding cash. So every hoarding cash and investing, right? And so what does that mean? Well, next let's say if next year um, prices of houses tank, well, I'll be there to buy some more. Let's say next year uh, my investment account, my personal account, which is invested in S&P 500 and uh, other index funds, let's say if it tank by 50%, I'm just making this up, just 50%, right? Great, I'll buy more. So why would I be mad about that? Why would I have any issue with that at all? Why would I panic about that? I, I should be excited about that. Like, are you kidding me? You're gonna give me a 50% discount on the thing that I love collecting? Yeah, go ahead, crash. And I'll, I'll be there just buying, buying, and buying. Because why? Because I live below my means, collected my little you know, nuggets here, and I'm now investing them. So, so put the experts in perspective. And I would say, not only drown them out, but also go ahead and prepare. Okay, prepare for the markets to go up and down. Know that they go up and down all the time. This is totally normal. And the next time the market goes down, have some cash on hand to buy assets at the cheap. Okay, because that's what you did, right? You prepared by not buying up to your brim of your paycheck. And now you have the ability to go buy stuff on the cheap. That's great. So that's how you make money. That's how you actually go about and get ahead. So anyway, um, this video has gone way farther than I thought it would. Um, I'm hoping this stuff is helping somebody. If it is, let me know. If this is like boring you and this is like stuff that you don't want to listen to and um, let me know that as well. Um, and hopefully in the future, I can sort of uh, figure out how to do this better. All right, go ahead and leave some comments and let me know what's on your mind and what is your philosophy on investing and spending money. Um, and let me know what else you wanna, want me to create videos about. Anyhow, thanks for checking this video out. I'll talk to you next time.